I was cast in Third Rock from the Sun because I had just been uh, fired off of uh, another show. When I first read it, uh, the first thing that I thought was, oh, this is really great. This is really spectacular. And then the, the second thing that I thought was, this will never get on TV. Never in a million years will this ever be, you know, viewed by the public. And uh, so I went in and I auditioned and just kind of kept working my way up the chain to, you know, producers on up. And uh, then it was just a matter of testing and, you know, for a network to get it. But it was... Uh, you know, it was sort of great. I, I remember at one point when I was almost there, I was really close to getting this job, and uh, John Lithgow came out and he said, look, there's a little concerned about, you know, your eyes. They can't see your eyes. It's the, the squint. Would you try doing it without? And so I went back in and I did it without, and it was just, it was, it was creepy. There was something odd about it. I don't know. It just didn't, it was really creepy. And so they, uh, they said, no, no, put it back, put it back, put it back. And, uh, you know, that's kind of... Uh, Kind of how it started. Whoa, that's the place where we landed. OK, all right, we have nothing to worry about. Sally cleaned up the landing site. You said you were going to clean up the landing site. No, 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 no. I said I was going to clean up the landing site. <laughs> so you cleaned up the landing site. No. <laughs> uh, Harry is an idiot. I know you're waiting for something else. Uh, what kind of character is Harry? He's an idiot. I passed my GED. <laughs> you are looking at a high school equivalency diploma guy. I guess what appealed to me about it was that you have this character that's sort of a traditional Gilligan or a traditional Squiggy or a Screech, you know, somebody who's just, you know, an idiot and they're going to be bumping into things and they're going to be messing everything up and they're going to be the reason that nobody can get off the island. Better check the bottle, Dick. Some of this stuff's over a year old. <laughs> I think he's, uh, he's really can be classified more as a pet than anything else, you know, a pet with a job, you know, like a seeing eye dog. You depend on him, but at the same time, you don't want them, uh, you know, doing your finances. Right? No! Television for a week! Now that's final! Well, wait! No TV! What'll I do? Why don't you try using your brain for a change? Well, what good can come from <laughs> Uh, no, you have the wrong number. I'm going to transfer you, but if I lose you, try again. <laughs> John Lithgow? Hmm. <clears throat> Oh, gosh. All right, there are two answers for this. Working with John Lithgow, uh, in reality, is just a living, uh, breathing, screaming hell. Shut your foul mouth! He's egomaniacal. He's petty. He's mean. Blah, blah, you made your point. I said I agreed. Now get out! Selfish. Greedy. Wait your turn! Stinky. Evil. Uh, uh just bald. <laughs> You know, and that would be sort of the, the one that probably won't make it to the DVD, so I'll, I'll, I'll give you the other one. John Lithgow's a joy. He really is. I mean, he's like, he's sort of this delightful character. And anybody who works in sitcoms know that uh, as goes your star, so goes the show. And uh, if you have a star that's uh, a tyrant and a creep, then you're going to have a tyrannical, creepy time. And if you have one that's, you know, uh, lovely, that... It's going to go lovely, and it just did. Uh, he's got this spirit about him that's sort of uh, a joy for life, and he's, uh, he's always the smartest guy in the room, but you don't necessarily feel that way, you know? He's just this sort of spectacular leader and this wonderful talent, and uh, yeah, I think he was really the one who made that show a family, you know, this great sort of uh, parental figure, this very fatherly figure that you could actually trust and rely on, and you knew... Uh, that he was going to have your back. It's a magnificent experiment. I intend to prove that a nurturing family and a solid role model can turn a man's life around. And who would that role model be? <laughs> You're looking at him, sass mouth. <laughs> Sally, I'm ready. Okay. The lady working with Kristen Johnson. She's a force of nature. Uh, is the main thing. Personality disorder. I'm gonna go kick his ass! <laughs> she sort of seems like this big, boisterous broad 
from uh, another time, you know, like she should have this man and she'll stomp on everything with her great big muddy shoes, you know. But she's, but she's like, uh, she's got a barometer for uh, comedy and for what works that, that not a lot of people have. <laughs> she knows when something's wrong and she's unrelenting about getting it fixed. Harry, tell me if this milk tastes bad. <laughs> and she knows when something is working and she's unrelenting about protecting it. Look, you know, being your roommate is not as much fun as it used to be. <laughs> You've only been here an hour and a half. Yeah, and it's an hour and a half too long. <laughs> All right, this is it. The last box of shoes. Well, load it up, boys, because I'm moving out. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. <laughs> For the first time in my life, Do it I... or I'll kill you. Okay. You know, the taping can go six, seven hours, eight hours, so, you know, you want somebody in there who's really rock solid, and that's, that's Kristen. I mean, she's, she's, you know, she's really, she's a spectacular talent. Hey, Thirsty? Oh, I know you. You wouldn't say anything if you were. <laughs> you must be bored out of your mind. No, not at all. I was talking to the plant. <laughs> Working with Joseph Gordon-Levitt is awesome because he is that character. He's, he was uh, this really smart human being in, an, in a really young body. Tommy was a little tense, that's all. And he said some things that he didn't mean. Trust me, he is not going to retire. Hey, guys, look what I found in the basement. <laughs> Eh? Tommy, you can't be serious. Well, actually, Dick, I've been thinking about it for a while. And, you know, uh, this was never my dream job. So are you going to go back to the home planet? Nah, so drafty there. There's that, uh, there's that film in the air. You know, I like it on Earth. There's, uh, women, gravity. You know, it's nice. Joseph was genuinely smart and genuinely sort of soulful and uh, genuinely sort of knew who he was from the very get-go and he was just really fun because he also, like Kristen, sort of has a BS meter and he can tell when something doesn't work or when something does or when we're doing something to please other people and, uh, you know, he, uh, I have a great fondness for him now. So, Tommy, what's with the mustache? Well, guys, I've made a little decision. The mustache stays. Oh, that's muy macho. <laughs> If you're doing a sitcom, you're, you're going to end up doing physical humor. But for this, I think the whole idea of it was that the Marx Brothers have come down to study uh, Earth and its culture. And that's, that's the basis for it. And so we sort of went from there. This place is so creepy, Don. I knew jails had bars, but I didn't know they were so confining. <laughs> that's kind of the idea. Don, I can't get up. Don! A lot of the time I was on what they called the B or C storyline, and that's where you really get your ass handed to you. You get bumped into stuff, and you know, you go, we'll throw them off this, we'll throw them off that. I understand completely. <laughs> and if you, they discover that you can do it even a little bit, they're gonna, you're gonna take a beating for the rest of your life. Okay, on a count of three, deep breath. One, two, three. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm becoming thin again. <laughs> I thought you were going to exercise. Sally! What? Uh, help Harry. What is that? It's called the Shatner. Now, now go on. <laughs> One, two, three, go! All right, got it. Thank you, Lieutenant. <laughs> oh, what? No, Dick. It's just sort of like being in an old silent movie or having this great opportunity to, to, to you know, exercise this art form, and it's, it was, it's really fun. I mean, you know, people have got to be pretty smart to do stuff that stupid. This can't be happening. This cannot be happening. It's got to be another crazy dream. It's not a dream, Dick. I don't believe you. I still don't believe you. I'll never believe you. Oh, all right, all right. I believe It was sort of like this nice privilege to be there and to have been lucky enough to slide in on something like that and write it from wall to wall. I mean, that's six years of, of just really having a good time. So, uh, you know, I, I, I miss it, but, uh, but I also felt like the way 
it started all the way to the way it ended. It was just, you know, sort of a perfect experience. So you don't want to mess with that. <laughs> Hello? Hello? I'll check upstairs. I'll check the basement. There is no basement. Ah, then my work is done. <laughs>
statistically, at least one of us should be divorced by now. Oh, I want that one. And 10% of us should be gay. That's not why we got divorced. Okay, take this down. I need you to find a place. Whoa, 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 whoa. I need you to... Harry, forget writing it down. Just memorize it. I need you to find a place. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I need you to find... Harry, forget memorizing it. Just listen to me, all right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about cake. What is this? Oh, it's my backpack. Yeah, it's a backpack. You don't wear it on your back. You just oh. throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> oh, well, here I go. <laughs> oh, uh, aren't you forgetting something? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this...